What's going on, everybody? My name is Ben, and welcome back to the bench for another episode on Arrivals and Adversaries. To me, a 148 scale F4U-1 Corsair. Let's go ahead and grab the kit, guys. We've done a lot of work here, a lot of scratch building, a lot of wiring and whatnot. And so far, I'm loving how this is turning out. We added plug wires in there. We added some couple of scratch built parts for our cockpit as well as a ton of wires for our instrument panel. I have a few more to put on there as well. And then we added some sidewall detail there. We do have to go ahead and do a little bit more work though. I want to add an extra detail there in the wheel wells and all that and the tail wheel. But I think we're definitely on the right path. Now, initially, guys, on this episode, I wanted to go ahead and do some priming and some painting. thought that would be a really fun thing to do. But unfortunately, we realized I don't have the right paint. This is actually an early Dash 1 Corsair, and those early Corsairs had different colors for the cockpit as well as per primer. Now, the cockpit actually uses a dark green color called Dull Dark Green. And I don't have any of that. I've got a couple of different greens, yes, but I don't want to have to sit there and mix and match a bunch. I just would rather go out and buy something that would work. Though I could use deep green, I prefer to just get something that is actually meant for that color. So we're going to go ahead and just put these all aside, and I'm going to go ahead and buy that by AK Real Colors. Joe's been talking about that. He says, great paint, so I'm going to go ahead and give him a try. And I picked up the dull dark green from them, so I'll go ahead and use that. Probably next episode, I'll start painting. Also, the primer for the tail wheel and for the wheel bays, that's going to be a different color as well. Again, it's not a yellow zinc chromate. It's actually a salmon color, so that's very, very unusual. I don't have any color even close to that, so I'm going to have to go ahead and maybe mix and match some you know, red-brown with red with yellow. So I'm going to have to come up with something that I can mix together that looks about right because I can't find anything comparable that I can just buy off the shelf. So that's going to be interesting. However, so we don't waste an episode today, guys, we're going to jump in and do a little bit more scratch building and wiring. I also want to go ahead and do some basic assembly for like the wings and the landing gear bays and get everything kind of moving in a good direction. Plus, I want to go ahead and take care of that footwell on the right inner flap. So let's go ahead and jump into our first time lapse. Let's go ahead and start getting these parts and pieces built up. And let's go ahead and tackle that wheel well. Let's add in some wiring. This should be fun, guys. Let's get this party started. Let's get the ball rolling.
All right, everybody, we are back. And so far, so good. We've actually added in a lot of details to these wheel wells. And again, I was using some 0.3 millimeter solder to add in some wiring and piping. And I've also gone ahead and used my references as well as another model I saw online. So I think this is coming along and I'm pretty happy with what we've got. So that means I can go ahead and close up the wheel wells and just get these things ready for next episode when I'm hoping to prime and to paint. So that's gonna be kind of fun. Also, I was looking at the outer wing portions. The fit is actually very clean considering just how oddly shaped these wing folds are. So I'm pretty pleased. Hopefully it'll be cake to get these things together. Now, as I mentioned, I wanna go ahead and finish off the center portion of our wings. And for that, all I need to do is go ahead and glue the top portions down to the lower wing half. Not that big of a deal. Everything fits really, really well for this kit. And then once these are glued down, I can add in the other little details like the front leading edge intakes, clean up the seams, get them ready for priming and painting, and eventually get these all nicely installed with the outer portions of the wings. So, so far, so good. I'm having a blast with this model. Even for an older kit, this thing actually fits really, really well. Anyway, I think what we're going to do now is I'm going to get these all nicely tacked together, and then I want to move on to some cleanup. There on the front leading edges of the center portion, of the wings. I also want to go ahead and put together the outer portions of the wings and I want to tackle that tail wheel. I've been looking at it and I think it could use a little bit of some extra detailing as well as some part cleanup. So let's go ahead and jump back into the time lapse guys and let's push through the rest of these wing assemblies, get that all nicely squared away and then let's tackle that tail wheel and see what we can do with that. All right guys, let's keep it rolling. We're getting there.
<laughs> All right, guys. So we are back. And as you can see, we have done a little bit of detail work there on the tail wheel. And I got to tell you, I want to do even more. So far, all I've done is drill out a couple of lightning holes right around the front support. But I want to go ahead and do a little bit more cleanup even than that and do a little customization. So luckily, I've got this really awesome picture of a Dash 1 tail wheel. And I can compare this with the kit part. And that's really, really helpful because now I can see what exactly is missing. And to be honest, the kit part isn't actually that bad. But we are missing a couple of actuators. And I think I want to go ahead and try to add those on to give it a little extra interest. So the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do, guys, is I'm going to grab a hollow brass tube. I'm going to go ahead and kind of ream out the front of that. And I'm going to add in a tiny piece of solder wire to go ahead and act as a connection point between this and my eventual actuator for that arrestor hook. So I'm going to go ahead and take a very thin strip of styrene that I cut off of some spares, and I'll glue that down to the indentation between the leg of the tail wheel and that arrestor hook. It's going to drop right down to that little nook, and I think once that is solid, we can go ahead and attach that to our actuator. Of course, as I see in my references, this kind of sits a bit upwards and at an angle, so I want to go ahead and get this position just right before I glue it in place. And once I'm happy with that, then I'll tack it in and we can move on. So yeah, something right around there. Then I'll grab my super glue, take a little bit of super glue here on my custom home applicator, which is honestly just a piece of derailleur wire chucked into the end of an X-Acto knife, drop a little bit of accelerator on there, and that's not going to go anywhere. That should stay in place. So that is good. Let that go ahead and tack up. And then I want to go ahead and cut it down, and I'm going to cut off the arrestor hook. Now you might be wondering, Ben, what are you doing? Why are you cutting off a piece of the model? Most of my references that I have seen, especially when they're talking about the land-based early Dash 1 Corsairs, they removed the arrestor hook because they were operating off of dirt and crushed coral airfields. So it saved some weight. They would pull it right off. So we're going to go ahead and do the exact same thing. Now, once the arrestor hook is gone, I can come back in. I can clean up the area. And there's actually a little bit of a detail back here that's supposed to be almost like a U-hook. And I'm going to go ahead and just auger out what we have there, give it a little bit of 3D depth so it looks a little bit closer to what you have in the pictures. It's not going to be perfect, but I think right now we're going for artistic license. And then, of course, let's go ahead and test fit this down into the model and let's see how it looks and right like that perfect and yeah there you go so it does look a little bit funny not having the arrestor hook on there but like i said the references show that a lot of times they pulled that hook clean off and that's what i'm going for so yeah not too bad of course, since I did remove the arrestor hook, I am going to have to add in some extra detail in there because you can see a lot more of the wheel bay. So first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is straighten out some solder wire. And I'm going to be adding in some structural detailing here so that you get some to look at, especially if you flip the aircraft upside down and you look down at the tail. So first thing, I'm going to add in one of these very long straightened pieces of solder. And we're going to go ahead and tack that into place so that it kind of disappears into the very tail. Then I'll add in a couple of smaller 0.3 millimeter solder wires just to add Act as some stringers and some extra wiring and piping. I don't know what these do, but I do see it in references, so I'll just add them in. Again, a little bit more artistic license here, not exactly 100% accurate, but I think it actually is going to add a lot of interest to the area, and that's what we want, especially if someone looks down inside. So I'll do that for the other side. Go ahead and let that dry, and we'll move on. Now, the last thing I want to do here, guys, is I want to add in the support structure that goes on top of that window that sits at the bottom of the fuselage. Now, this is actually a funny thing because this window was sometimes overpainted in the field because it really didn't serve any purpose. So I don't know if I'm going to overpaint it, if I'm going to leave it alone, but I know the Dash 1 would have had the window, and so I have some leeway here on what I want to do with it. But regardless, I want to go ahead and get that structural detailing in there so at least it looks about right in case I decide to open the window up and to have it visible down through the cockpit. A couple of drops of glue, we are good to go. And with that, guys, we are done for today. We've done a lot of work here, a lot of extra detailing, some wiring. We've messed around with the cockpit, with the rear tail wheel, with the wheel base. Just to show you here, I did add in an extra cabling right up here in the front of the instrument panel. That is actually just solder, twisted around more solder. I see a large hose inside the cockpit, so I want to go ahead and add that in. We added in our wheel bay piping, so I think that's actually really interesting. Adds a lot of character to that very plain area. We also worked on the tail wheel, and that was super fun, guys, customizing this bad boy. I did drill out some lightning holes here on the lower support for the tail wheel. I did add in the actuator for the arrestor hook, and I did actually remove the arrestor hook as well. Now, yeah, it looked a little bit funny just having the actuator and no arrestor hook, but again, my references show they would have pulled that off, and I want to go ahead and represent something that looks a little bit different than the normal Corsair. Of course, because I cut off that arrestor hook, I wanted to add in a little bit more detail there in the tail wheel bay, 
And I think that actually looks pretty decent if you put it together and you can take a quick look at what you see and you'll notice you do see something in there. It's not just a big gaping hole. This actually has a little bit of character to it. If you go ahead and test fit tailwheel into the bay itself, you can kind of get a feel for what you will see and what you won't see. Having that arrestor hook cut out there gives it a little bit more of an accurate representation of those early Dash 1 Corsairs. And of course, we did work on the wings themselves. We have the outer panels. I need to do a little bit more cleanup there. I contemplated adding in some brass barrels for the machine guns, but then I opted not not to because you really can't see them in real life so that's fine and you can see it does fit beautifully right into the center section of the wings so i can't wait to go ahead and get these all nicely cleaned up get these all glued together and get a full corsair wing and as you saw i did go ahead and backfill that footwell on the right innermost flap that wasn't something that was brought into play until i think the dash four so i wanted to go ahead and just smooth it over i used some super glue and some styrene strips and i think it looks pretty decent we'll know once i go ahead and prime it but i think that's going to be just fine and just to give you a little bit of an idea what we've done here when we put it all together you can kind of peek on the inside and you can see some of the wires some of the consoles some of these scratch built parts, some of the hoses, and you can of course see that detailing looking down through the cockpit through the fuselage. So that's pretty cool. I like how this is coming together. And if I can get this thing painted up nicely enough, it should really jump out at you. And that's what I'm hoping for. So next episode, that's what we're going to focus on. We're going to get on that priming and the painting. But that is it, guys. We are all finished up for today. I think adding in those wires and doing a little bit of detailing there on the tail wheel and all that really did make this thing look a little bit better than just right out of the box. Plus all the wires in the piping and the wheel wells and in the cockpit. I think it's going to be really, really fun to paint. And that's going to be next episode, guys. My paint is on order. Hopefully it shows up before next episode. And until then, you guys know the drill. Go out there, get yourself some bench time, have some fun, build something cool. Make sure to drop on by Joe's channel. Check out how his A6M3 is coming along. It is an awesome looking model. And we'll see you back here on Rivals and Adversaries, episode number four, for more Corsair fun. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care of yourselves, and we'll see you soon.